Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. And greetings. Thank you so much for joining me, Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, for another edition of Herbally Yours, right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Herbally Yours brings you the latest information about the many facets in the world of natural living. Today, our guest is Dr. Rob Brown. Dr. Brown has been a practicing radiologist for 25 years. Throughout his career, he has witnessed firsthand the adverse effects of toxins on human health. He went to Brown University and uh, Miami Leonard Miller School of Medicine and also Western Pennsylvania Hospital, where he completed his uh, residency training. We're going to talk today about Dr. Brown's new book, Toxic Home, Conscious Home. What a great name. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Brown. Yes, thank you for having me. Well, you obviously were trained, highly trained, in what we like to call conventional medicine. I'm very big about making a distinction between conventional medicine and traditional medicine. I discuss traditional medicine as we define it on the council that I'm on, which as the panel of traditional medicine at Columbia Presbyterian Medical School. And we call traditional medicine things that might be considered herbal medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine from India, really ancient healing arts versus conventional medicine. But I would say radiology actually has a a pretty um, in-depth history as well. And I'm interested in the fact that you're talking about toxic home because certainly radiation can be involved, such as the new 5G network and things like that. Yes, yeah, absolutely. You know, we we like to think that most of the toxins that we're exposed to are our chemicals, you know, things that have, uh, interact with our bodies through biochemistry, but uh, sources of energy, exogenous energy, like you're saying, the Wi-Fi and uh, 5G and things like that are, you know, they affect our health too in ways that I don't think we completely understand. Well, tell me what made you be so interested in this topic to actually go about, you sound like a busy guy, writing a book takes a lot <laughs> of time, so you have to be motivated to do that. Yes, you know, as a radiologist, I just I, I started seeing an increase in disorders that I think are presentable, you know, preventable, uh, and it's just been frustrating seeing the onslaught of, of of conditions like celiac disease, which nobody even uh, heard of 25 years ago. I mean, it was in the teaching file that we studied for our boards, but nobody around the country had celiac disease. So. Um, and now there's there's an onslaught of people with cardiac arrhythmias, and I just think that, you know, we're, we have some of this wonderful technology at our disposal, but we're not using it properly. And, I, and it's become a passion of mine to kind of go into this and explore it in depth. And it's, it's sort of uh, like going down the rabbit hole. The farther you go, the more you discover. And it just becomes, it's fascinating. It's a fascinating study. And uh, I really wanted to get this out to the public so that people can start becoming more conscious, hence the title, uh, of what they're bringing into their homes, because I think since we spend most of our time in our homes, that's the place to start detoxifying your, your surroundings. Well, and in terms of environmental health, which your book, uh, Toxic Home, Conscious Home, would certainly be under that genre of mm-hmm. environmental health. Uh, you know, there's, is, there's really such a progression of people having health issues which is are not even looked at in terms of the possibility of there being an imbalance in their home or in their workplace in this area. Yep, yep, that's true. It's interesting, you know, as I we have uh we have a war on the natural toxins in our environment. So for example, if you buy a house you know, they'll do a radon test, they'll do a, a test for mold, they'll do a test, you know, for lead paint if you request it. These are all toxins, right? But we surround ourselves with toxic hands, these man-made chemicals that we've put in our carpets to make them stain-resistant, like PFOA, or we have 
you know, different types of volatile organic compounds coming from the paints and glues and, and building materials that we build our houses with. Yet there are no regulations uh, for these materials, and they're, they're not even considered when you buy a house. So it is, it's interesting how there's a dichotomy there. So true. Well, I've been in this field a very long time. Actually, I started in natural medicine in 1964. Yes, that's with a six. And then for 20 years, I worked with Dr. Serafina Corsello. She had a clinic called the Corsello Center for Complementary Medicine, which we had two offices, one in Huntington and one in Manhattan. And one of the things Dr. Corsello used to do is, of course, the normal a test that anyone would do in terms of trying to see what kind of balance or imbalance a patient had. But very often, like you're saying, Dr. Brown, she would find no irregularities in a blood work. Other physicians then put these people who are still complaining about not feeling well, usually on some kind of uh, psychiatric meds mm-hmm. and saying they're depressed, but they're not. They're depressed because they feel lousy and, and that they couldn't unearth something that was wrong with them. But then she would go into testing things like PCBs and heavy metals, right. and she would find a vast array of of chemicals that shouldn't be there in patients' blood and very high levels of things like heavy metals. And I just want to share that for her efforts, the uh, Department of uh, Medical Surveillance um, actually went after her and took her license away for doing these tests, even though no patient was ever harmed and thousands of patients got well. They said right. that, that it was uh, over-testing. Right. Yeah, it's kind of scary when you get. When you, <laughs> I, I, I've heard many stories like that, and it's very. It's unfortunate. That's the world we live in, right? Yeah. Well, what what led you to this? Did you have a personal experience with a patient where you did dig deeper and find out that this was what was wrong with them, or was it more a personal thing with a family member? Like, what led to this interest of yours? Uh, I think I grew up with this type of mindset. My mother was, she was a pioneer in wellness also back in the 60s. Uh, she just did study for her own her own benefit and the benefit of our family. She suffered from what would be now uh, considered chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, but she instilled in us a sense of, you know, it's very important what you put in your mouth, what you, you know, how you, how you live. It's uh, all very important, and there's nothing more important than being well. And so, you know, your mindset, your your wellness state is the most important thing that you can work on. And, and so that was kind of how I was raised. But it wasn't until I, I had a bout of cancer when I was a, a second-year medical student, uh, had melanoma. And that whole experience of you know, being a patient, receiving a diagnosis where I was given a, 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 a survival of, I think it was 40 to 60 percent in the next five years, something like that. It was it was uh, scary, very, very scary. And uh, it changed my mindset completely to realize that, you know, you have to make as much of your life as you can while you're living, experience as many different things as you can. And I, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get other people to wake up and realize to take care of their health and to, to go out and explore. You know, don't, don't get stuck in a, in a routine in habit and, and go out and explore the world and do as much as you can. Because uh, those are the things that really kind of instilled the, this, uh, this idea into me, I would say, at the beginning. Well, what do you do when you're dealing with a patient? How would you bring this topic up? You know, it's interesting. The first time I saw a case of celiac disease, uh, I told the patient what I thought it was, and nobody had ever uh, had ever, you know, they didn't, we didn't know where it came from, uh, and people still are arguing with the sources, although I'm, I'm pretty sure I know. Uh, and I, you know, I told the patient what I thought it was, and I, I didn't have any recommendations at the time, but as the years progressed and more and more people started coming through, I would tell people, you know, you know, read up about GMOs, read up about glyphosate, read up about your microbiome. These are all things that are affected when you have a condition like celiac disease. 
So well, what uh, great what great information. I do want to remind our listeners that you're listening to Herbally Yours on the Voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, and my guest today is Dr. Rob Brown. We're so happy to be discussing with him his book Toxic Home Conscious Home. So you were sharing that Dr. Brown, and uh, you know, you began to integrate this information into what you shared with patients, and I think that's really, you know, just absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Yes, I, I think it's important, very, very important. So, now, what uh, have yeah, you so found to be the most significant sources of what we call indoor pollution? Uh, for me, the, I, I think that the most significant sources are those sources that, that cause uh, the toxicity of our air and those things that we ingest. So the things that we take internally, of course, things that come in contact with your body are also very, very significant, such as you know, suntan lotions and, and, uh, and, and cosmetics, things like that. But for what I would tell people to concentrate on in the beginning is their water and their food and their air. Uh, the three most important things, and there's that uh, that organization, Food, Air, and Water Watch, which I, I I highly recommend people look into. But a lot of people, for example, their water, they buy plastic water bottles, and even though we've been told, you know, BPA is a you know, hormone disrupting chemical, it can cause excess. Uh, est- your body thinks that it's, it's getting estrogen when it, it uh, absorbs BPA. Uh, people are still drinking from plastic water bottles because now they're labeled BPA free. And right. Yeah, oh, tell us about that. So you're saying that when they, even if they're labeled BPA free, well, that's what, not what, enough. The, no, because what the chemists have done is they've replaced the BPA with uh, chemicals called BPF and BPS, among others, and they're also endocrine disrupting chemicals. So the the packaging can be labeled BPA free, and yet there's BPF, for example, in the plastic, which also leaches into the water, which also causes hormonal disruption. You know, so gonna... that is diabolical. That's sort of like they can say zero trans fats when there's zero trans fats if you eat one cracker. Right. But as soon as you eat two, but yet there's a big giant zero trans fats. And that is horrible. So they're allowed to say BPA free, even on, let's say, cups and things that you might buy for children. Right. Oh, yes. And then one of the things that has me most concerned are plastic straws have BPA. And, you know, children are sipping soda, which is packaged in plastic bottles, which contains BPA or BPF. And, you know, acidity and an increased, in temp- increased temperature causes more of the chemicals to leach into the liquid. So if you're drinking a, an acidic soda, you know, soda contains phosphoric acid, you're sipping it through a straw, you're absorbing BPA through the soda. And, and, and that's something that commonly the children are doing. And you know, there's an ep- epidemic of, of obesity in our children and all kinds of other hormonal issues. I, I personally think that this, is, uh, this may be where it's coming from, it's from the plastics. Well, it's, it's certainly one of the places. To tell you the truth, my own children, who are now in their 40s, by the way, um, never had any soda, period, because there's just so many negative influences. And a lot of my patients go, but they really like it. Okay, so once a week, that's one yeah. thing. That's right. very different than every day. It shouldn't be in the home. Well, that's that's right. And I, I believe, like you're saying, you know, every now and then, it, you know, drink from a plastic water bottle, have a, have a glass of soda, it's not going to hurt you. It's what your daily routine is. What are you exposed to daily? What is it that your body's becoming accustomed to? Those are the things you really have to pay attention pay attention to. I really think that's true. And I want to tell our listeners, we'll take a little break here, that you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Listen live online at nccradio.org or on iHeartRadio. We're really excited to be on iHeartRadio, and you can listen anytime um, by just downloading the iHeart app. For more information on today's guest, Dr. Brown, or topic, email whpc at ncc.edu. Stay tuned. Herbally Yours will be right back. Hey, everybody. Rachel Ray here. Nothing puts a bigger smile on my face 
than cooking up a big meal for family and friends. But there's not enough room at my table for the 17 million kids in America who are struggling with hunger. These children, that's one out of every five, often have to skip meals because there's just nothing to eat in the kitchen. Yet